Hello, hello everyone. So, uh, welcome. Welcome to the sixth episode of Introduction to Security offered at Tufts University. I'm Ming Zhao, Associate Teaching Professor. And today, we're going to talk about vulnerability scanning, uh, exploitation, the badnessometer, and also the misconception that a vulnerability scan and pen penetration testing are the same thing. So it's going to be a lot of demos today. Um, lots of demos and we want to start off with a little motivation. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So I get this all the time. One of the questions I get all the time is how do I check if X has or have any vulnerabilities? A vulnerability is a security weakness. Now, X can be one of the following. It could be a system, like an operating system. It could be a thing. Uh, could be a network, could be a web application or a website, uh, or it could be source code. So the big question I get all the time is, how do I check if, you know, X have any vulnerabilities? And today we're going to focus on system, thing, uh, and network. Uh, next week, when we do uh, web security, we're going to talk, uh, we're going to do um, web application and website, you know, to check if they have any vulnerabilities. And then later on in the month of November, uh, we're going to talk about, oh, how do I, you know, how do I check if a piece of source code or even a binary have any vulnerabilities. But today we're going to start, we're going to work with system, thing, uh, and network. So how do I check if a system have any vulnerability? How do I check if a thing have any vulnerability? Or how do I check if a network have any vulnerabilities? Okay. Um, so just a few preliminaries, what I have at home, what we're going to work with today. Uh, on my home network, I have uh, two things open. I have Metasploitable, which is a deliberately vulnerable virtual machine that I think I talked about a few weeks ago when we did scanning and network reconnaissance. Um, the delib we're going to use that again today. So Metasploitable, deliberately vulnerable uh, system that has lots of vulnerable services um, put together by Rapid7. And I also have Windows 7, an unpatched version of Windows 7 Professional um, at that following IP address. So Metasploitable at home, at my house, is running at 192.168.1.241. And I have Windows 7 Professional uh, running at 192.168.1.203. So these are two, well, as you can guess, they are vulnerable systems at running on my home network. Uh, you can run your own vulnerable lab uh, using virtual machines. Uh, on your laptop or your desktop at home too. So but you can run your own network as well. I'm running these as virtual machines. So my virtual machines are Metasploitable and Windows 7. So usually when someone asks me, how do I check if you know, these are, have any vulnerabilities in them? Uh, my first answer that I tell people is, Okay, if I'm given a system or I'm given a thing or I'm given a network, one of my go-to tools that I am going to use uh, is going to be Nessus. Um, it's been around for so long. It was open source at one point. Now uh, they closed sourced it. It's now a commercial product. But there is a free version of Nessus that you can use. Nessus uh, is put together by Tenable. Okay, so Tenable, uh, know a lot of great folks over there, I want to give them a shout out, 
but their uh, famous product is is Nessus. You got a products, you got a tenable.io. Um, yeah, why don't I do a free trial? Uh, I don't want to do a free trial. Actually, I just I had it bookmarked. Uh, there is a free version of Nessus, and I'm not mistaken, there's maybe an education version of it as well. I use uh, the free version of Nessus. So I'm going to try for, well, I'm going to learn more. So what it got, um, the essential version, free download, scan up to 16 IPs. Uh, ah, actually, they say ideal for educators, students, individuals starting to careers in cybersecurity. Learn more about the essentials in the classroom program, uh, in the classroom with Tenable for Education program. This is pretty cool, I think, for a lot for, for most of for most of people who are tuning in here and less listening. Um, Tenable's been around for a very, very long time. So when you register for it, when you register for Nessus, you have to get a, a product key, and then you have to download um, a copy of Nessus for whatever operating system. I mean, it supports on Mac OS, Windows, Linux, uh, list goes on. So assuming that you have downloaded and installed ne uh, Nessus correctly, uh, how you open it up and how you run it is on a web browser. So it's going to be HTTPS colon slash slash. It's going to be whatever, um, if you install it locally on your computer, I think it should be localhost or 127.0.0.1 and at port 8834. I actually have uh, Nessus installed on my Kali box. 834, hit enter, yeah, you're going to get this message, I'm going to accept the risk and continue, and here we are, I have Nessus Essential um, installed and running on Kali Linux. I use this all the time, I use uh, every so often to scan the stuff on my network, there's my username and password, I'm in. So, here, this is the interface. I have one scan. I have one scan here. But I want to take the show back, my, the biggest question of them all, the original one. Uh, how do I check if X have any vulnerabilities where X is a system thing or a network? In this case, I want to check if Metasploitable, how many vulnerabilities and what are the vulnerabilities with uh, Metasploitable, and also with uh, the Windows 7 uh, Professional and Patch Machine. So 192.168.1.241. So let's create a Nessus scan for Metasploitable. So I'm going to create a brand new scan at the upper right corner. All right. So here we are when you are going to create a scan, ten, um, Nessus offers a number of different options. There's a host discovery option. You can do that with Nmap, though. I mean, that, that you can do that with Nmap. But what I'm really concerned about are vulnerabilities. I want to see for all the security weaknesses out there. Now, for vulnerabilities, you can do a basic network scan. You can do um, an advanced scan. You can even do a mobile scan to do a uh, mobile scan. You can do a web application test. We'll do more of that next week. Uh, you can check for, ooh, interesting, interesting. I didn't know this until now. I didn't know about this. Um, Nessus free version, you can also check for WannaCry ransomware. Remote and local checks for MS17-010. What in the world is that? We will talk more about that later today in today's episode. Uh, you can check for Spectre and Meltdown, Shadow Broker Scan, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, I'm going to do a basic network scan. I'm going to choose a basic network scan on the Metasploitable uh, system that is up and running. And here we are. So I've created my settings. I can even enter my credentials. I can enter in credentials. I can enter in plugin. So I'm going to call this the name of this basic network scan, Metasploitable. And the description. Just leave that blank. And the targets. And this is where you can enter in a single IP address or a range of IP address. 
192.168.1.241. Okay? So I can save this automatically. I can do that. I can just save it automatically. Or I can actually go and choose a whole bunch of options. There's discovery, assessment. Uh, I can even do settings for report. I'm not going to modify any of this. What I do want to do is I want to go to credentials. Uh, why not? I mean, why not? In this case, I give credentials. I'm going to give, uh, I do know the SSH credentials from an exploitable. So authentication method. No, not public key. Is there a password here? Ah, here we go. We have password. Metasploitable, uh, famous username is MSF admin. And the password is also, well, <laughs> Unsaved password could be compromised if Nessus connects to a rogue SSH server. Well, it's on my home network, so whatever. MSF admin is also the password. Elevate privileges. I'll just leave that here. I'll just leave that here. So MSF admin, username. I'll also type in MSF admin as the password for my exploitable. Um, just leave everything else the same. I mean, it's safe. I'm good. So here we are. It created a scan for uh, Metasploitable. Now, the next step is, okay, what's going on? Nothing happens. The next step is you have to run it. So what we're going to do next is click go to Metasploitable. And you see this thing, this uh, the play arrow, the play icon here says launch. We're going to click on that. Gonna be running and now as you can see the scan is running the vulnerability scan for metasploitable is now running let's create a new one let's create another scan for the windows 7 box we're going to do a basic networks uh, basic network i'm going to do windows 7. and the ip address this one is 192.168.1.203. Okay. Let's do credentials as well. Uh, ooh, there's a Windows credentials option. Um, authentication method. Okay, we'll just leave it a password. Uh, username. I do know if... Uh, Username, type a password as well. Wouldn't you like to know? I mean, I'm pretty sure you may be able to, uh, chances are, you know, you may be able to guess what the password is. Give you a hint. Hello, John Podesta. I'm going to hit save. Okay. So on Nessus, uh, Metasploitable is running. We got to do the same for our Windows 7 as well. Hit the launch icon for Windows 7 and let it run. So now I got two vulnerability scans on Nessus running. One against Metasploitable and the other one against Windows 7. We need to wait for a few minutes or minutes for the results to come back. So we're going to come back to this. We're going to leave this up and running. Um, so the question I get is, is Nessus compatible with Link? Absolutely it is. So again, I installed my instance of Nessus on Kali Linux. Okay. So I'm going to let this run. We're going to come back to it. You can even log out if you want. You can even log out and sign out out of this if you want. Um, I'm just going to leave it running. Now, if you're concerned about the commercial na nature of Nessus, uh, there is uh, an alternative that you can use, which is called OpenVAS. OpenVAS. OpenVAS is the Open Vulnerability Assessment Scanner. You can install this on Kali Linux. You can install this on Kali Linux, and it is part of Kali Linux as well, too. Uh, Nessus, no, no longer. 
So what OpenVOS is, is a full-featured vulnerability scanner, but um, what OpenVOS really is, it was, it is a fork of Nessus from uh, in the early, in, in 2000. And so, again, as I said earlier, uh, Nessus was originally open source for, you know, in the, in the very beginning, and then in 2005, the developers of Nessus decided to just continue to work under the open source license and switch to a proprietary business model, which they are today. And so, of course, open bosses just became that fork, that open source fork. Okay? Uh, very similar use, very, very, very similar usage, uh, very similar to, um, to Nessus. The only difference is OpenVOS is open source, okay? Uh, the scanner is accompanied by a vulnerability test feed with a long history of daily update. This is actually important to know as well, too. If you're using an open, if you're using a vulnerability assessment scanner, such as Nessus or OpenVOS, you have to make sure that you update what you call your feed, your, your feed of vulnerabilities uh, every so often to get the latest and latest updates. Because if you don't download if you don't download the um, the update feed, um, your scans are not going to be um, you're not, your scans are not going to hit the latest and greatest vulnerabilities that are known. Again, that are the vulnerabilities that are known. So important to download that dictionary every so often. Fifty thousand vulnerability tests. Oh, interesting. Uh, interesting. So I'm going back now to my Nessus uh, scans, and it looks like that the Windows 7 uh, scan is now done. Because it says today, and it got a check mark completed. So what does this mean? Do we get any results? Let's find out. Let's click on uh, Windows 7 Professional, and hopefully we'll find a bunch of vulnerabilities. Did it? Ooh. Here we go. The basic network scan is complete, and it took two minutes. Well, it really helps that I'm on my local network so everything gets a little faster. All right. There were some critical vulnerabilities that were found. There are some high ones as well, including a medium one. Interesting. Two critical, one high, two medium, and a whole bunch of information one. See what exactly the vulnerabilities that Nessus found for Windows 7 are? Click on the Vulnerabilities tab. There are 23 things. Okay. All right. VMware virtual machine detection, trace route. Okay, there's a lot of blue, a lot of information stuff. But this is where the interesting things really happen. The medium and the mixed issues. What are that? Let's go to the mixed issues. Let's click on that. There are five mixed issues. Oi. Oi, 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 oi. This is not good. This is not good. So the two vulnerable, the two critical ones are, one is MS11-030, vulnerability and DNS resolution that can allow for remote code execution. Okay. Unsupported Windows OS remote. Uh, what in the world is that? Can I get more, can I drill down for more details? Let's take a look. I think someone actually on the chat and someone in the chat mentioned that Windows 7 is no longer supported. Yeah, that's a critical vulnerability. You can see that it's the severity is critical. Um, the publication date of the vulnerability was April 3rd, 2018. Uh, the risk factor is critical. The base scores are 9.8 out of a 10 in CVSS. Okay, that's not good. So, I think someone on the chat said that Windows 7 is no longer supported, and that's an issue. Well, it is an issue now, as you can see. Hell, it's, it's a critical one. But there are some other bad ones as well, too. Let's go back. This is a high one. MS17-010. It's a high issue. You click on that, MS17-010, critical security update for Windows at Microsoft. Windows SMB server, Eternal Blue, Eternal Champion, Eternal Romance. Um, these were the stash of zero days. 
vulnerabilities, zero day vulnerabilities that were stashed by the National Security Agency, and they got like they got dumped. Um, and here's the description. It said, "Are four of the multiple equation group vulnerabilities and exploits disclosed on uh, April 14, 2017, by a group known as the Shadow Brokers? WannaCry slash WannaCrypt is a ransomware program." Utilizing the Eternal Blue exploit and Eternal Rocks is a worm that uh, utilizes seven Eternal Equation Group vulnerabilities. Kitia is a ransomware program that utilizes CVE-2017-0199. So, this Windows server was has not been patched to fight against MS-17.010. Which, of course, you know, if you look back at global history, um, MS-17.010 is very famous for, you know, um, eternal, well, they call it eternal blue, but really boils down to one word, WannaCry. Okay? Uh, what else have I seen? Here's the output. Interesting. So, the Windows 7 uh, machine is vulnerable to this, to, um, to WannaCry. Later on, we're going to check if that's really true or not. We're going to use uh, we're going to use something else for it. Um, and also, there's a couple of medium uh, vulnerability that was found as well. So yeah, Nessus found some really serious vulnerabilities with the version of Windows Seven Professional that I am running. That's not good. Not good at all. Ah, let's go back. Let's go back. Metasploitable, the report, is also done by Nessus. It's also done. Let's take a look. Oh, this one is wonderful. This one's lovely. This one, as you can see with Metasploitable, Nessus found 27 critical vulnerabilities, 20, 97 high ones, 144 medium, 16 low, and 169. Uh, 169. Took about, it took eight minutes to do the scan by Nessus. Ah, uh, okay. So, vulnerabilities, just way too many to list. Just way too many to list. Including the VNC password. VNC server has a password called password. Has a backdoor. Unsupported version. Weak SSH keys. Whole list of things. Whole host of things. Now, you may be interested, what is this remediation tab? Is there, what does that say? Uh, yeah, uh, the remediation really boils down to update the effective package, update the effective package, update the uh, uh, package, patch, patch, patch. Really boils down to patching. Okay. Now, here's like a little caveat. A lot of information security professionals said, you know, go patch your stuff, go patch your stuff, go patch your stuff. That will solve a lot of your problem. Generally speaking, that is true. That is very true. However, in act the actual doing, it is a completely different matter. Sometimes you just can't just tell people, oh, go patch your stuff, go patch your stuff, go patch your stuff, go patch your stuff, go patch your stuff. I mean, yeah, I, I get that. It's not that easy. What happens if you have a fleet of computers all around the world? What happens if you're a big shipping company that has tens of thousands of computers worldwide? Or what happened if you're a financial institution, like a global financial institution, that you have tens of hundred thousand computers worldwide, and yeah, you just can't push everything out, you know, right away. Okay, you can do that, but then you actually run into the risk of okay, what happened if I patch something and one of my production systems actually break because of a patch, and that always happens. So, yes, while patching actually is, uh, like, you know, the thing to do, in principle, it's extremely, extremely difficult to do. Extremely difficult to push out, like, you know, a single patch, who, you know, to make sure that your whole fleet of computers get updated. Really difficult problem. So, just don't, don't just say that, oh, go patch your stuff, go patch your stuff, go patch your stuff. Not that easy. Not that easy. All right. So, now... Nessus has found a whole bunch of issues with both Windows 7 and, Metaspl uh, and the Metasploitable machine that we got. Okay, so that addresses the question, how, do I, how can I check if X have any vulnerabilities? 
we can do a we've done system uh, in this case both lint of metasploitable Linux and Windows um, you can even check this with a thing like a light bulb as well um, it does a network scan yes we did that um, Nessus does that and it, actually I just did it with metasploitable and Windows 7 uh, okay, what about a web application uh, and a website? What about that? I can blush. I can delve into that a little bit. I can delve into that a little bit. Um, for checking if a website or a web application have vulnerabilities, there are, there are, of course, you can do it in Nessus. Yes, you can. I can log out of this now. I don't need this. But let's see if I can go to 192.168.1.241. Can I go to that? Yeah, here it is. Now, what about, here's a website that is running at 192.168.1.241. What about scanning for websites and web applications with problems? And the answer is there are lots of tools that does that. There are lots and lots of uh, vulnerability scanning tool for web applications only. So many to list. There are lots and lots of them to list. And lots of them are part of, yet yeah, that are, that you can use in Kali Linux. One of my absolute favorite web application vulnerability scanning tools is called Nikto. N-I-K-T-O. It's an, A is a, Quintus is an old tool written many years ago um, by Solo. Now the source is open source, okay? It's open source, it's free. And so Nikto is an open source web, sc web server scanner which perform comprehensive tests against web servers for multiple items including over 6,700 potentially dangerous files and program, outdated version of servers, uh, specific problems on servers, configuration items, yada, yada, yada. The list goes on, and the source uh, code of Nikto is on github.com slash solo slash Nikto. You can run it as a Docker container. It's been updated that by Chris Solo. Hello, Chris. Thank you so much for all your for your contributions. One of my absolute favorite tools to use, and because it's generally pretty simple. So I am now going to open up my terminal. Uh, why don't I just uh, do this again for today? I'm just going to increase my font size. That's 36. There we go. Move the window up a little bit so my head doesn't get in the way. Okay, I'm going to SSH into my Kali box. And how you run Nikdo is a follow-up. Well, before we do that, let's do man Nikdo. Nikto is a scan, scan web servers for known vulnerabilities. Exa now again, this is only for web servers. Uh, if, for example, if a server is running port 80 or 443, that's very important. So Nikto is for web servers, okay? Uh, examine a web server to find potentially potential problems and security vulnerabilities, including server and you know, everything that I just read. Um, earlier on the web page. So how do you run Nikto is the following. Nikto. Well, lots and lots of options. Nikto, the latest version, no host or URL specified. Um, all the options that you have. This right there, minus host. You have to enter in the target or the target host or u slash URL. Let's do that. Nikto minus host equals 192.168.1.241. And hit enter. Let's see what happens. Boom.
lots and lots of results here. Interesting. So there's a PHP my in directory. There's an icon directory. There's a test directory. That okay. That gets interesting. There's a doctor. Uh oh. Doc directory is browsable. Uh, really? We'll take a look. Based on my vulnerability scan of this web server, let's add a slash doc at the end of the IP address in the URL. Huh? Really? Huh. PHP info was, uh oh. Was this true? Man, that one is true. Okay, this is not good. Oh, we're running a real old version of PHP here. Oh, crap. That ain't good. All right, there's a MySQL server running on here. Uh-oh. That ain't good. Yeah, PHP my admin? Double check. Yeah, that's open. Yeah, that's that's there. So yeah, so Nikto is a re does a really quick scan. Again, I mean it's just Nikto space minus host equal and then the IP address for the domain. Um, one thing, I'll let you know is you may be curious what this OSV. DB is. So OSVDB uh, is the open source vulnerability database which was run by actually by good friends attrition a uh, whole bunch of people. It's no longer active. The open source vulnerability database um, it was an independent and open source vulnerability database also tied in with CVEs as well. Whole bunch of people, uh, Rainforest Puppy, uh, Jericho, Liger. Want to give a shout out to Liger and Jericho. Want to give a uh, guy a shout out. Oh, Corsello, who, as you just saw, did um, uh, he did Nikto. Yeah, they were all behind this project, and yeah, the project was shut down in 2016. Um, yeah, but it's, you know, it's good to learn about the history of how these things happen. So OSVDB uh, was an open source vulnerability database. I mean, nowadays, I mean, the big ones are CVE, um, CVE and CWE. Uh, so, yeah, Nikto, straightforward to use, um, found a lot of things, and you can just go and verify it. What other vulnerability scanners are there for, um, on Kali? There's a lot of them listed on a day-to-day -day basis. Another vulnerability scanner I use, um, I actually like to use this. Uh, if you're interested in Word, if you want to scan for WordPress website, the WP Scan. Uh, WP Scan. Um, is there a man page for WP Scan? There is. Uh, WP Scan is a WordPress security scanner. Um, op free and open source as well. You may be wondering, like, why do I care? Like, why do I like to use WP Scan? It's because a significant percentage of websites are powered, including like major websites, are powered by WordPress. Uh, WP Scan is free and open source. Also, you can install that on Kali. You can just do the app and install WP Scan out here. Okay, it's already up and running. It's already yeah, great downloaded. Uh, how you install Nikto? Same idea. App install Nikto. WP Scan. So, W WordPress Scanner. Um, WPScan.org. Is this the latest web? Is that the latest website? I think it is. Huh. I think it is. Um, I always look at the, the GitHub page. That's the source. Um, updated three days ago. 
yeah, Nick, I mean, WP Scan, great tool, especially if you're auditing WordPress, um, WordPress websites. That's another scanner. Okay. So, we talked about scanning. I've talked, let's see the scanners that we've gone over. Uh, just many of them. Nessus, OpenVos, Nikto, WP Scan. You can also use the quintessential Metasploit as a vulnerability scanner. That's why I want to go next. Now, Metasploit is one of the really big go-to tools for penetration testers. Really big tool. Metasploit. There's a commercial version, but there's also a f uh, community version of it. Um, Metasploit is now maintained by uh, part of Rapid7. Um, you can also get the free version, the, uh, the f f open source version on Kali. It is the, uh, used in a lot of penetration tests. It gives you everything. It gives you scanners. It gives you exploits. It gives you, um, it gives you even post-exploitation modules to use. So much stuff, like so much stuff that you can use. And what I want to do now is I want to go back into something that I did earlier, which was I did a Nessus scan of the Windows 7, of the Windows 7 server. And it found in the result of the Nessus scan that it is vulnerable to MS17-010. Can we take advantage of that using Metasploit? Let's do that now. So, before I begin, before I go deep into, well, breaking into the system, let's talk about the security bulletin. Microsoft Security Bulletin MS17-010 is a critical, very, very critical, published in March 14, 2017, and sadly, you know, because people didn't update their stuff, you know, that's why WannaCry happened. Lots and like in the security bulletin by Microsoft, lots and lots of CVEs, lots of vulnerabilities got fixed and not only got disclosed, but also got fixed as well, too. So the key is MS17-010. So now what I want to do is I want to open up my version of VMware Fusion. I want to continue. I want to open up the instance of Windows 7. There's a reason why I want to do this. Okay, I'm going to log in. Beautiful. I'm going to open up the window. But I'm also, what I'm going to do, let me open put the windows in the upper left-hand corner. And I have my instance of Kali Linux that's running here and the terminal. So they're two different machines, two different IP addresses. What is my IP address of the uh, of this Kali Linux anyway? Let me do an if config. Uh, if config. All right, so my IP address for the Kali Linux instance is 192.168.1.211. What I'm going to do now is I am going to use Metasploit to not only scan for the vulnerability on the Windows server, but also to also exploit it. So I can fire, pop up a calculator and delete files on the system when I do that. All right, so how you fire up Metasploit is the following. On Kali Linux, I like to, I, I really prefer terminal. MSF con, uh, before we do, man, MSF console. All right, man, and Metasploit framework console. Metasploit is probably the most popular interface of MSF. It provides an all-in-one centralized console that allows you to efficient access to virtually all of the options available in the Metasploit framework. 
MSF console may seem intimidating at first, but once you know the syntax and the command, you will learn to appreciate the power of utilizing this interface. Lots and lots. It can be overwhelming. But I'm going to do some really simple ones first. Oh, I want to give a shout out to HD Moore, the creator and father of Metasploit. Thank you so much for your work and to all the contributors as well, too. Okay. So I'm going to quit this. And so I'm going to fire up MSF console. Starting the Metasploit Framework console. There we go. Signing up, and when you actually fire up the console, you get a beautiful ASCII. You get beautiful ASCII art. So, again, you may be wondering, what in the world is this? I mean, what is this Metasploit thing? Well, Metasploit has, two thousand right now, on my instance of Metasploit running on Kali Linux, I have 2,048 exploits, uh, 1,108 auxiliary, 330, 344 post-exploitation. I got 566 payload, 45 encoders, 10 no-ops, and 7 evasion stuff. All right. You can upgrade a shell ooh, to a interpreter session on many platforms using session mode. Okay, minus you. One of the first things that... Okay, here's the here's the command here's the command prompt. MSF five. So what can we do? One of the things that I recommend people to do, the very first thing to learn Metasploit is to search. So I want to search MS seventeen. What this will do, and you actually search is really nice, so you just do search, space, and in some terms, whatever it is. And once you do that, you'll get a num. You'll get a bunch of results. Let me just move my terminal here. I just search for MS17, and you can see a lots and lots and lots of stuff that have anything to do with MS17. Ooh, interesting. Here we go. Here we go. We have admin. A ooh 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 ooh. I have an auxiliary admin SMB MS17 underscore zero one zero underscore command. Ooh, I have that module. Um, I have an auxiliary scanner for SMB, for SMB. So here's how the uh, organization works in Metasploit. You have auxiliary, you have exploits. And this usually boils down to auxiliary, which is like helper functions, scanners, and they even complain exploit codes uh, and an exploit. So auxiliary admin, no, auxiliary scanner, SMB, uh, SMB underscore MS17-010. And so this will actually check this module will actually search for MS17010 uh, on a target. So all of these things that are numbered, like the auxiliary, 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 exploit, 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 these are also known as modules that you can use. A lot of different modules, a lot of different exploit codes. Okay, so let me, you know what, I want to scan. I want to use a, this scanner. So I'm going to make a copy of this entire name of this module, auxiliary slash scanner slash SMB slash SMB underscore MS17 underscore 010. So what I'm going to use is this. So I'm going to do now to use a module, you do use and then type in the module name. So I'm going to use auxiliary slash scanner slash SMB slash SMB underscore MS17 underscore 010. And you can see my command prompt has changed. So it's using, it's now using the scanner SMB uh, for SMB uh, underscore MS17 underscore 010. So what do we do next? You just can't just run or just, ex just execute this thing. You have to set up your options. So your next thing that you have to do is called show options. And there's a lot of options for this module. One of the things that I'm going to do now, and you know what, this is where I need to use a smaller font size, where you can all see. Crap. It's much more easier if I can just use a smaller font size. 
Uh, let me get out of here. Sorry. Let me start that up again. Ah, here we go. So SSH in the Cali. MSS console. You really want to use a small because you want to see all the options that are available. <laughs> Use the scanner. Here we go. Scanner slash SMB. Here we go. Show options. Aha, 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 aha. Interesting. I have a whole bunch. of options here for this module for scanning for SMB vulnerability uh, on the Windows server. So I have check architecture, yada, yada, yada. The required parameters are our host named underscore pipes and our port, which is 445. The only thing I need to fill out is our host. So if you remember what the IP address of the Windows server is, of the Windows 7 machine, it's 192.168.1.203. So now to set an option, you do set our host, and then 192.168.1.203. Right now our host is empty for this module. Show options again. And now you actually see our host is filled in. So two important uh, functions, uh, two important functions to use in MFS, MSF console are search, show options, set, use. So now to run this scanner, all you have to do is type run. See what happens, see what the result will be. Mm -hmm. Likely vulnerable. Okay. Can we actually take advantage now and do some exploitation and have some fun? Let me do a search again for MS17. MS17. This time, instead of using an auxiliary scanner module, I want to use an exploit. Let's blow up that Windows 7 machine that I got running. Let's use this exploit. One of the nice changes, thank God, that the recent made change, recently made in um, Metasploit is the default to use a meterpreter. You'll see what a meterpreter is. It is awesome stuff. Uh, okay, I'll wake that thing up. Show options. Our host is not set. Set our host to be 192.168.1.203, which is the IP address of the Windows machine. A lot of stuff is filled out for you now, which is good. I put like payload option and exploit target. All right, can we break into this machine? Can we do some crazy stuff on this Windows 7 uh, box? I set up all my, I, I chose my exploit. I'm finished with my settings. Now, just exploit or run. Oh, 
holy shit, we got in. Yeah, we got in. All right, cool. Cool. So I got the interpreter open. So you got a total win here. But what does that mean? Now what can I do? Uh-oh. Help. Can I get system? Crap. Can I do a hash dump? Operation failed. Uh, you can see the Windows machine as they popped up and said, can I get close that? We start automatically. Aww. You know what? I can't restart the damn thing. Damn. Can I get a uh, PS? Oh, yeah. You can see all the processes that are running on the Windows 7 box still. I can record now because we got in. We can take a record a mic. We can do a webcam chat. Up, 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 up. Crap. Let's uh, exit out of the interpreter. But wait a minute. Let's wait until the window machine goes back up. It's back up. Let's run the exploit again. But now we have to execute really, really quickly. So we got in, we got a terminal running. We got, we've successfully exploited. Ah, come on. Come on. Okay, I'm not getting a win here. We got that before. We got to fail now. But we got a win before. So it was definitely vulnerable. Oh, but here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. We got to win. Help. Let's do a hash dump to get all the username and let's get all the, the usernames and the, uh, the, the password hashes. Here we go. So we got a hash dump. We got all the hashes on the system. On the system. Administrator, DEFCON, and GUESS are the only three user accounts on the Windows machine. Okay? Can we get a system to elevate our privileges? Got system one. Nice. Show options. What other option? Oh, help. Help, help, help. Can I do a, uh, can I do a screenshot? Oh, okay. I got a screenshot of the thing. Interesting. What else can I do? I can actually take control of the mouse. I can take control of the, ooh, I can actually send keystrokes. I can even capture keystrokes as well too. Let me do a key scan underscore start. I don't know what that is. Key scan underscore start. Okay, starting keystroke sniffer. I don't know what that does. I've never done this before, so this is all new territory, I, I swear. I've never done uh, keystroke start. Okay, can I record my thing? I don't know what that does. So, wait a minute. What else can I do? Here too? Oh, key scan dump. Ooh. Dumping key strokes. I don't know what that does. Um, what else? But the more important thing is, can I actually get a command prompt? Can I get a command prompt to go and blow stuff up on here? Ah, here it is. Ooh, we got a lot of them. Shell. 
drop a system command shell. All right. Oh, let's do a sysinfo. Defcon PC. Okay. Let's get a shell on this thing. Nice. So I got a shell on my Kali box. So I'm going to go CD C Dur CD users Dur CD Defcon Dur CD Desktop. Okay. Nice. Can I actually do an echo? Echo hacked into a test file called, uh oh, got txt. Does that work? Boom. All right, this is, I hate to do this, I hate to do this, but excuse me. Uh, what have I hate to do this is that because it's a common joke. You got to pop a calculator. Can I do calc.exe and do a command? Oh, as you can see, something happened here. All right. A program is trying to, okay. Woo! Let me turn now. Okay. Nice. So I got that. What have I do? Goop. Calc.exe again. Still trying to do the same thing. PS. Oh, I can't do PS here? What the hell? Oh, PS list. Aww. All right, I'm going to go to CDC. Windows, duh. Um, I think you know what I'm going to do now. What happened if I just did a Dell star? Just delete everything on the system folder. Let's see what happens. Yeah, why not? Aw, access denied. Oh, task manager. Not exe. Yeah, task manager is running. Return now. Interesting. Um, okay, can I actually do a uh, CDC again? Duh. There's a Python here? I don't know why that is. All right. But you get the point. I mean, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff now. Um, so using Metasploit, we completely exploited the Windows 7 machine that's running on some different IP address somewhere. Um, we can take full advantage of it. Can I quit out of this thing? Terminate channel number one? Yeah, why not? Go back to Metroper. You can do a help. Hey, can I actually do a screenshot again? Save screenshot. All right. You know what? I'm going to run here. I'm going to quit now. I think I have enough fun with, uh, I had enough fun. I can get system. I can, okay, dump the hash to dump again. Yeah. Yep, got my hashes for the Windows 7 pad, for the Windows 7 bar. I'm going to quit this. I'm going to get exit. Uh, I'm going to quit Metasploit as well. Doing LS. Woo! Got two screenshots here. I want to dump these two JPEGs onto my onto my desktop here. See what happens. I'm gonna CD into my desktop on my Mac. I'm gonna do an SCP Cali JPEG. Ooh, look at that. Here's one of the screenshots that we got. Hey, there's another one. Cool. So I can monitor everything that the uh, machine is doing. All right. So why does executing Win32 app to the to create this inter uh, interactive 
I don't know. That I do not know. I do not know why that is. And again, I haven't patched this for a long time. I can't answer that one. Good question. I'm wondering that too, because, you know, I would fully expect if I actually just run calc.exe, it fires up calc.exe, but it doesn't. I don't know. Good question. Very, very good question. Um, so I do want to leave with two really, really, really quick points here. Okay. So I want to talk about something that my friend and mentor, Gary McGraw, yeah, I had plenty of time. The second time I had plenty of time, good question. I don't know why. I don't know. But just still, we got in. Hey, that's all that matters. We got in. I mean, the second time around, we also got it. It also detected it as well. I want to find leave. Um, be, you know, the last two points I want to make is, is this. There are two important final points I want to make for today. The first one is something I learned from Gary McGraw. Uh, who is not only a friend, but also the mentor, the person who introduced me to this field um, of security. And if it, wasn't, if, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. But, you know, he's known as the, you know, considered the father of software security. And there's always been a question is, what's the value of using these tools? Um, what's the value of using such tools um, like a Nessus or a Metasploit or an OpenVos or a Nikto or a WP Skin? Like, what's the point of that? And are there, is there any value to val vulnerability scanner? And the answer is yes. And he introduced this concept many years ago, which I've been ingrained in my head, called the badness -ometer. Now, what a badness is this. The value of a vulnerability scanner is that, well, it finds vulnerabilities. And if it does find critical stuff, like as we've done today with Nessus, you have some serious problems. But at the same time, a vulnerability scanner like Nessus is not the end-all be-all. Okay? Even if you run a vulnerability scan and it finds absolutely nothing, and it, it, it finds absolutely nothing, it doesn't mean that your system is 100% secure. And the reason for that is this. What happened about zero days? What about vulnerabilities that have not been discovered yet? And you know that with so much software and given time, more lines of code, more vulnerabilities that you'll find. Especially, and there are still many vulnerabilities that have not been found yet. So the point of the badness armature is, okay, and also ultimately it really ties in with vulnerability scanning tool. If a vulnerability scanning tool, like a Nessus, like a WP scan, like a Nikto, Metasploit, you find problems, you got problems. You got to fix those things right away. You got to fix those things right away, especially critical ones like Eternal Blue, Eternal Champion. Like you're in deep, deep trouble. You got to fix that. You got to patch the system right away. Okay, so that's the value of vulnerability scanning tools. You know, to find the obvious problems, and you got to to find the obvious vulnerabilities, and you got to fix the obvious vulnerability if the scanner finds them. But if the vulnerability scanner does, that's 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 important. But if, you, if the vulnerability scan, scanner and the tool do not find anything, it doesn't mean that the system is secure. Because really, it's the other end of the spectrum. Who knows? And as you know, there are new vulnerabilities that come out every day. Okay? So even though if a vulnerability scanning tool does not return anything, okay, who knows? Who knows? So a bad anisometer is really brought to a deep, deep trouble. Namely, if your vulnerability scanning tool finds something, so who knows? So that's the badness armature. There is value, of course, for vulnerability scanning tools, especially to find deep trouble problem. The other big issue that I find laughable in, in the security field and in the industry is the number of people who actually think that a vulnerability scan is the same thing as a penetration test. They're not the same, okay? A vulnerable, some people, yes, it is true that there are, there have been many professionals 
who'd run a NASA scan, who run a vulnerability report, and then turn that in, uh, maybe with the icons and, 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 and the letterhead chain, and turn it into a penetration test report. That's horrible. Okay, a vulnerability scan is just to see what vulnerabilities are out there. That's what a vulnerability scan is, to see what vulnerabilities are on a system. But a vulnerability scan doesn't mean that it actually broke into a system. It breaks in and does the exploitation. That's what a penetration test is. A penetration test is, can you break into a system, get all the root, get all the password, get all the critical and sensitive file? Can you do that? That's a, that's a penetration test. A penetration test means getting in. Penetrate. Okay? They're two different things. Okay? Too often we see too many people just turn in a vulnerability scan report and, oh, as a penetration test. We actually did both today, okay? We actually did both. The vulnerability scanning, done the reporting with Nessus, but we also did break into Windows 7 by way of exploiting it, by way of Metasploit as well. But they're two different things. Vulnerability scan, just a scan. Does not do any exploitation. It just shows what vulnerability is out there. Penetration test, break in. Show that you can break in, get all the loot, find where the problems are, but also identify all the problems. So next week, we're actually going to be even doing even more exploitation and penetration testing when it comes to web security. We're going to do SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and a damn vulnerable, damn vulnerable web application. That's all we got today. Thank you. This was fun. Anything else? Yep, today we ended a little early today. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. All right. I uh, yeah. I mean, I I'm looking at the chat. I don't. I, that's an interesting interactive service detection dialogue. I don't know. Thanks, everyone. See you next week.